find the following integrals using inverse trig functions. For my first integral, we have integral of dx over 4 plus x plus 2 squared. When I look at this, we should note we have a number plus a quantity in x squared, so that might lead me to believe we're looking at an inverse tangent type problem. So what we'll be looking for is this du over 1 plus u squared, and then the substitution is u equal to tangent theta. So the idea is to target the 4. We want to make sure that gets turned into a 1. The way we do that is to factor a 4 completely out of the bottom. So to take a 4 out of x plus 2 squared is the same as just dividing by 4. Note, I multiply 4 through, I get back to the original. Now I can take the 4 and move it to the inside of the square. So that will become x plus 2 over 2 squared. And now I have dx over 1 plus something squared. So that's something I'm going to let be equal to u. And then I can use the tan substitution. So I let u be equal to x plus 2 over 2, which is x over 2 plus 1. du is a half dx. dx is equal to 2 du. So I substitute everything in. And you notice we have our du over 1 plus u squared as promised. From here, if I have it memorized, I can go straight to the answer. But let's do it the long way just to remind ourselves of how this works. So we proceed here by letting u be equal to tangent theta. I can, um, this is the same as saying theta is equal to the inverse tangent of u. We'll need this for later on. du is then equal to the derivative of tangent with respect to theta, which is secant squared theta, d theta. I put everything in. The top becomes secant squared theta, d theta. And note the 2 canceled with the 4 to give me a half. And the bottom I have 1 plus tan squared theta. So now I want to see if this will collapse any further. OK, well, the bottom, if you don't have this memorized, you should at least be able to do the trig substitutions to figure out how to make it collapse. We have cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. If I divide everything in here by cosine squared, that gives me 1. Sine over cosine is tangent, so tan squared. And then 1 over cosine is secant, so secant squared. So this bottom here turns into secant squared. The secant squareds go away, and we're just left with integral of d theta. That's just going to be theta, and we pick up the 2. So I get theta over 2 plus a constant. Now we just have to unwind things. OK, well, note here, theta is equal to the inverse tangent of u. So we have 1 half inverse tan u plus a constant. And then we get rid of the u that was over here. We have 1 half tan inverse of x over 2 plus 1 plus a constant. Let's check this just to run us through the derivative of inverse tangent again. So let's take a look. I take the derivative of this. The half comes out. So the rule for the derivative of inverse tangent is if I have box here, it's going to be 1 over 1 plus box squared times the derivative of whatever is in the box. So that's going to be 1 over 1 plus box squared times the derivative of whatever is in the box. OK, what's in the box is x over 2 plus 1, so its derivative is a half. OK, now I can do cleanup. Well, the halves go together to become a 4. I multiply this by 4. Multiplying this by 4, well, that goes in as a 2 squared, so it's going to take out the 2 in the bottom. Then I'm left with 1 over 4 plus x plus 2 squared. So my check works out. All right, let's do the inverse sine substitution. But let's make this a little bit more evil. What I mean by this is let's try integral of dx over square root of minus x squared minus 4x. Now, if you recall, for the inverse sine, what we're looking for is du over 1 minus u squared. And that's not really apparent that this can even be put in this form if we just look at it at a glance. So what happens is, is whenever you have a square root of a quadratic, the way you should go is try to complete the square. 
you complete the square, sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't, but that's our first avenue of attack. So in this case, I'm going to complete the square of x squared plus 4x. The rule for completing the square is you take half of what's in front of the x. x plus 4 over 2 is x plus 2 squared. And now I'm going to take the 2 there and subtract its square off. So it's going to be minus 4. If I multiply it through by a minus sign to get what's on the inside here, we wind up with 4 minus x minus 2 squared. And that looks slightly familiar. Not quite, but slightly. So now what do I do? Well, I'm going to proceed like we did before. I'm going to have this 4 minus x plus 2 squared in here. And I'm going to factor a 4 out so I can target that 1, which I'm using in the substitution. So doing that, same trick as before. The 4 goes in the bottom here. And then I can move the 4 into, inside the square to get, OK, well, we'll have the 4 coming out to give me a half dx over square root of 1 minus, and then x plus 2 over 2, quantity squared. So now whatever's in here, I could just punch out with a u substitution, and then I follow my nose. u equals x plus 2 over 2, du equals dx over 2, and then dx is equal to 2 du. I sub everything out. So let's see. We have 2 du. We have our half. And then I have my square root of 1 minus u squared. So now when I have this, the trick is you let u be equal to sine theta. du is then going to be cosine theta d theta. And for later on, we'll need theta equals sine inverse of u. OK, well, we put things in. So I have 1 minus u squared. That's 1 minus sine squared, square root. Cosine squared, square root, turns into cosine theta. And then du is just cosine theta d theta. Again, everything collapses nicely. And we're just left with theta plus a constant. Theta is equal to sine inverse of u. And now I just punch out the u, which is x plus 2 over 2. So I have sine inverse of x plus 2 over 2 plus a constant. Check our work just to give ourselves a workout on the derivative of sine inverse. So I do the derivative here. Derivative of sine inverse of box is just 1 over square root of 1 minus box squared, whole thing times the derivative of box. OK, so we just take the x plus 2 over 2, put it in the box, goes under the square root 1 minus box squared. Derivative of the inside here is just going to be a half, so that's multiplied on the outside. That 2 can be brought into the square root by squaring it to 4. Then I'm going to have 4 minus x plus 2 squared, because we can pull the 4 out of the bottom there, which is 2 squared. And now you notice, when I expand this, I'm going to go right to the minus x squared minus 4x whole thing square root, like we had when we started. So just another thing for your bag of tricks, we see quadratics under a square root sign. Shouldn't panic. Just remember, completing the square will at least get you somewhere.